Weeks, it's Wednesday, May 18th, 2022. Coming up on the program today, playing with a corpse while holding on to a hot pocket, plus the three-car pileup in my driveway, getting belt whipped just for watching a little bit of porn, and a decomposing Amy Winehouse body meat tray. All this coming up today. As far as what I really like in today's music, um... I'm into the new, I'm into that Japanese funk, um, that pop funk. I know you're going to dig this. this. So do a Google search for little Asian girl's feet. Oh, you'll thank me. Get it together! Oh, my goodness. All right, here we go. Hey, Freaks, Tim back here with you for the Wednesday edition of Distorted View Daily. Got a good one. Uh, Let me just tell you a quick story. Uh, Something insane happened the other night. Actually, uh, it was when I was recording the Tuesday episode of Distorted View Daily, which, of course, was Sideshow exclusive. In the middle of recording, I hear a spectacular crashing noise, followed by all three of my dogs freaking the fuck out. Now, if you know anything about me and how I operate, you know I um, I never run towards an emergency. I just sort of sit back and because nothing good could come of me going to investigate what the hell just happened. I'm either going to find the dogs destroyed something, like they pulled down the fucking refrigerator. Previously, when I heard a loud noise, uh, one of our trees had fallen down halfway into someone else's property. It was just like, I don't want to deal with that. Besides, that's why Lord Douche is here. That's his purpose. He deals with stuff. And, uh, you know, I crack jokes and try to calm him down after he gets all riled up. We have clearly defined roles. I can't tell you how many times I've heard something go down. And uh, I just sort of just stay in my place. I don't move. And then a few seconds later, I hear Lord Deuce screaming, Tim, get that out! I just look, I just don't want to be the first person on the scene. I'm not good in those situations. I'm, I'm entirely useless anyway, really. So whatever. I assume the dogs got into a fight or a, a chunk of the house fell off since, you know, our house is falling apart. It just makes sense. It all adds up. Still, this was a very loud uh, noise. Uh, I've never heard <laughs> this type of noise before. So I uh, I reluctantly stopped recording and uh, went downstairs. House is all in one piece. Dogs are fine. So I go outside, and that's where I find a car has fallen out of the sky onto two of my vehicles. You may be saying, what? What? Huh? What? Do that, I don't know, five or six more times, and uh, that's pretty much where I was at. So, uh, in reality, uh, we figured out exactly what happened. So, let me try. I I tried to paint this picture for Sideshow members. I don't know if I did a very good job, but our house is on a hill. Sitting at the top of a hill, uh, and then uh, to to actually drive up to the house, you park on the side. And the driveway is, uh, you you actually have to drive up, right? It's uh, at an incline. And then, you know, at the very end, it levels off. And then there's a a tall retaining wall made of stone or brick or whatever. And that goes up. And then on top of that, you know, there's there's grass and then the yard continues. So I'm actually kind of like on the the house is in the middle of a hill because it continues to go up after the house. 
So apparently uh, someone who was uh, at the house next door did not back out of their driveway. He um, had his car in drive and then got his foot stuck on the accelerator, freaked out, made a hard left and uh, crashed through some bushes onto our property. He ended up on that uh, the top part of the retaining wall and uh, then the, the car sort of like fell over <laughs> onto, onto a couple of our cars. Now, just a little further backstory. Lord Douche is having a bad uh, week, month, year. His love life's DOA. He's, you know, broke. His job's a joke. All the bad things that happen during the Friends theme song, that's uh, pretty much where he's at right now. Uh, no, he's, you know, he he was really just having a bad day. Because you had no. a bad day. No, Daniel Powder. This is not the time nor the place. You get back in your corner. Now, shh, shh. I hiss at him like a cat. Anyway, uh, I was trying to be nice. He, Lord Douche, for some reason, loves Dairy Queen. He loves b- blizzards. He's like a little kid, right? So I'm like, you want to go to Dairy Queen, huh? How about I take you to Dairy Queen? Make you feel better. And uh, he's like, uh, yeah, okay, uh, but do I have to drive? And I said, no, of course not. I'll drive. But that means we're going to have to move our cars because my car was wedged in. It was right up against that re- retaining wall. So um, it is because... He wanted me to drive that his car, both of his cars, were up against that wall where uh, the, the car later uh, dropped from the sky onto them. As you had a bad yeah, day, well, you one this down, time I'll allow it. Sad song just to turn it. It certainly sounds like uh, God is out to get him because uh, my car was supposed to remain again, uh, up against that wall all week because, you know, I don't leave the fucking house. I, you know, I do my show. He has to go to actually drive to work and stuff. So, he, you know, his car is always uh, accessible. Just so happened we moved it because, you know, he, he needed to have his Dairy Queen, his Girl Scout cookie blizzard. It's going to turn out to be a very expensive Girl Scout cookie blizzard. Anyway, so the car that has crashed onto our property... Uh, is uh, at a 45 degree angle. It, you know, it's on both of Lord Douche's cars. It's hanging over the edge of this uh, retaining wall. And, uh, uh, oh, and there's a person still inside of the car. So, uh, you know, I walk up to him. I feel, I feel like I w- I'm a police officer. So I like, I walk up and I'm like, um, what's going on tonight, sir? I mean, what do you say to someone who has uh, crashed into two of your cars and is, uh, currently st- stuck in their vehicle so um uh you know i open up the door because you know he asked me he's like can you hold the door open i'm, I'm going to try to climb out and sh- you know after some st- you know he's an older dude too so uh he uh he manages to pull himself out which is again dangerous because the car is like hanging over the edge and uh side show freak saw pictures i'll post them in the show notes today so you can see what uh, we were dealing with Naturally, uh, the next step was for me. Uh, by the way, I don't know where the fuck Lord Douche is at. And this, you know, I don't like to deal with stuff, right? So now I'm pulling guys out of cars. I'm calling the cops. These aren't even my cars. I really, you know, I really shouldn't even be involved in this situation. I should be upstairs recording my show, giving the freaks what they want, what they need. I should have just turned to Lord Douche and said, you know what? This uh, does not concern me. My car is fine. You deal with it. I bought you a blizzard today. What else do you want from me? Anyway, I called the police department and, uh, you know, my spotless record dealing with customer service people remains intact. I call the police department and I uh, I try to explain. I- I'm like, uh, hey, there's been a car accident at our house. Car toppled over on a couple of our cars. And they're like, all right, well, uh, yeah, police don't really come out for that type of thing. So I uh, just exchange information and, uh, you know, let the insurance deal with it. I'm like, uh what? And I'm like, um, I don't, I don't think you understand. This car, fe- the, the car has fallen on two of our cars. And she's like, but yeah, but it's a private property. So, you know, that's your problem. And I'm like, well, it's more than just a, you know, a, l- a little uh, fender bender. And she's like, well, has someone been shot? <laughs> I'm like, whoa. Like, no, it hasn't escalated to that level yet. And she was like, well, that's the type of stuff we respond to. 
I mean, it'd be one thing if the guy was, uh, you know, under the influence. And I'm like, well, I don't know if he is. I mean, he could, very well could be. And she's like, well, how do you know? And I said, I don't. That's the thing. Like, how the fuck do how would I know if someone else is drunk? Is he stumbling around? Yes. But he's like shaken up. He just like he fell from the sky. Furthermore, like, I don't want to say if I think someone's drunk or not. I'm like, look, I mean, this guy drove over two properties said he got his foot stuck on the accelerator, which is like totally something a drunk person would say, and then drove over what really amounts to a, a cliff. There's a, there's a shot that alcohol may have been, I, I don't know. So the only way I could get them out is to say like, I don't know, I think maybe. I mean, I, I would like it if you guys could look into this. And uh, so then a couple police officers came and by the way, I, I totally felt vindicated because one of the cop uh, guy, well, there was a guy and a woman and the guy was like, well, this is just a traffic, uh, you know, accident in a private property. So uh, do we even need to be here? And she's like, um, this is more than just like a little tap. Uh, there's a that like this. There's multiple cars and, and one has fallen on the other. Like, yeah, we need to be here. She was super cool. Actually, everyone was really nice. It, there wasn't like a, a blowout or an altercation. The guy who did this was very apologetic. He was not drunk. He was kind of limping around, but I think I noticed like something on his foot. I think he was had like a sprain or something. This couldn't have helped. The uh, I mean, it took a good, I don't know, three, almost four hours to figure out how to uh, move Lord Douche's car without making the other car that that is on top of it like completely fall over we had multiple tow trucks there were multiple tow there's so many people involved in this it was like a scene man there was like multiple cop cars multiple tow trucks there's like four tow guys like hooking up uh, wires and cables and shit to the car they were able to finally get our cars moved and um and then lower this dude's car without completely letting it fall over it was it was quite the the scene to watch they i mean phew, these tow guys were really good as for lord douches i mean the our retaining wall is kind of fucked up that's gonna probably be the biggest expense um as for lord douches car he has two cars because you know he's rich i think he's stealing money from me quite frankly I can't afford two cars. Uh, so he has like an older, like 2008 or 2009 Chevy HHR. You know, those fucking things that look like hearses. You know, you could stick a casket in the back. But he loves that car so much because it's the SS version. He thinks it's special. It goes fast or something. That car is pretty fucked up. And that's the one he has like the least amount of insurance on. But, I, you know, the other guy's insurance is supposed to cover all this stuff. Uh, but then his uh, newer car is um, a, a hybrid, uh, like a 2021. <laughs> it's, it's a lease, too. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he's got a lot of stuff to deal with. That one has isn't as messed up, surprisingly. So, uh, again, my car's fine, though. Rocking that Kia Seltos. And we'll be rocking that for a while. I'll be driving around, I think. The cops, by the way, were loving us. They loved this whole situation. They were taking pictures. They were getting pictures off of our phones. They're like, oh, I got to send this picture to my friend. This is cool. Like the way the, the car was hanging over the uh, the edge. And, you know, they just liked it because, you know, it was a private property. It was just a car situation. They weren't, de you know, they weren't getting shot at and they weren't out in the middle of the public or in the middle of a, a busy street or highway. Is that someone's house? It's a nice, easy night for them. So I'm glad I could do that for our... Uh, boys in blue or whatever boys and girls in blue all right so that was uh, my evening i gotta say this move to cincinnati that happened uh, i don't know three or four years ago at this point um just a great decision on my part since we've moved here we've had nothing but problems with this house the first weekend that we moved in that the basement flooded tree trees are falling down on other people's properties then fucking covid yeah i'm gonna blame covid on this move too now cars are falling. All right. Uh, so, yes, that was my day. I hope yours was a little better. But I'm back now and we've got a bunch of stuff to go over. You know, I increasingly have to look at uh, video clips with a, a skeptical eye because there's a lot of fakery, a lot of Tom fuckery going on out there, especially with uh, quote unquote local news reports ever since the fucker right in the pussy guy. There's been so many examples of, uh, you know, people doing some creative video editing to make it seem 
like someone is uh, talking to a reporter, giving a first-hand account on a situation, and then that person says something outrageous. Come to find out, it's not a real clip. They, they spliced themselves into the news story. The three victims were part of a CXS... Fuck it right in the pussy! <laughs> that'll, that'll always be funny to me. I don't care. Call me a child. Whatever. Uh, I will say this. Uh, there there have been accusations that uh, these clips are very sexist because it's always uh, a, a female reporter and the guy screams fuck her right in the pussy. But I don't think he's talking about the reporter. He's not saying fuck the reporter in the pussy. It is gonna be a bit- it's just something, uh, you know, offensive to clear. say. It took crews longer than anticipated to find the crack in the 64-year-old pipeline. I'm standing here with Fred, who says he was greatly impacted by the gushing of oil. Can you tell us a little more of what you saw? I sure can. I was sitting on my front porch, grabbed a beer, and fuck her right in the pussy. So yeah, unfortunately, I hate to burst everyone's bubble, but those uh, fucker right in the pussy clips are fake. They're manufactured. Now, there have been some real interviews on the news that have been hilarious. Like, of course, Sweet Brown. Well, I woke up to go give me a cold pop. And then I thought somebody was barbecuing. I said, oh, Lord Jesus, it's a fire. <laughs> then I ran out. I didn't grab no shoes or nothing, Jesus. I ran for my life. And then the smoke got me. I got bronchitis. Ain't nobody got time for that. Yeah, that was a real one. Uh, Sweet Brown actually turned that into a a little career. I've seen her on the television uh, doing commercials for like uh, some sort of dental group or something. Then, of course, there's Antoine Dodson. Well, obviously, we have a rapist in Lincoln Park. He's climbing in your windows. He's snatching your people up, trying to rape them. So y'all need to hide your kids, hide your wife, and hide your husband because they're raping everybody out here. My point is sometimes it's hard to tell, and occasionally even I get it wrong. I ran across uh, one of these videos today. It's a new one. And I said, uh, I'm not going to play this on the show. This is obviously fake. It's it's so clear to me that this has been edited. Well, then I actually went to the CBS local affiliate where this story came from, CBS Pittsburgh. And sure enough, this fucking thing is real. I hope I'm not losing my edge here. We're trying to figure out how a woman ended up dead in a hotel bathroom in Washington County. The coroner says the 42-year-old woman's body was found at the Roadway Inn on Saturday afternoon. A man who had checked into the hotel and was given that room discovered the body. Nice, pleasant, happy news story. I looked around and there was a week-old dead body in the bathroom. And so I ran out of the room, called 911. Well, I, I kind of like nudged her with my wings. I kicked her. Okay, see, right there. That's what I was like. Well, this is obviously fake. No one's going to get on the news and admit to basically kicking a corpse to see if she's alive. It's a specific detail that is a, a huge red flag that we're dealing with, uh, you know, in edited video. But there's an even bigger one here. Weak old dead body in the bathroom. And, like, he's sort of smiling there. And so I'm in the bathroom. And so I ran out of the room, called 911. Well, I, I kind of, like, nudged her with my, I wouldn't say kicked her, but, like, I nudged her with my <laughs> foot, almost dropped my hot pocket. Almost dropped my hot pocket. Again, a very weird detail, one that would totally be thrown into one of these, like, fake edited clips. I just love the picture this guy is painting here. Here my dude is, you know, just walking around a creepy-ass motel, and he stumbles upon a corpse, kicks it with his foot. He's got a hot pocket in one of his hands. This is the type of shit that just doesn't happen to Elon Musk or Tom Hanks. You got to be somewhere in a very specific income bracket for this type of scenario to play out in front of you all the time. It's like, you know he's an Uber driver or something. I mean, I'm not trying to throw shade here or anything, but I mean, look at him. He works at Domino's. This this is not a hedge fund manager. Regardless, you know, I blame the local news. They did this on purpose. They knew they had gold with this guy. They could have totally edited out the hot pocket comment or the part where he kicked the corpse. <laughs> Let's listen to the rest of the story. See if uh, Tommy makes another appearance. I almost dropped my hot pocket and was like, what do I do? So I called 911 and they came and said she's been in there for about a week. The coroner's office says the death is not considered suspicious. Yeah, the only thing that seems suspicious is uh, that dude who was on the scene. So the reporter wisely did not react to the witness's statement. 
didn't start cracking up or something talking about this uh, dead woman found in a motel. A couple of random funny clips I ran across. Uh, I'm very excited because the 4th of July is coming up, and that's uh, always good business for Distorted View Daily. A few days after the 4th of July, that's when uh, all the firework news stories start coming out. You know, people lighting off bottle rockets in their house, losing eyes, blowing off limbs, setting neighborhoods on fire. I've got uh, an example here of what we have to look forward to. This woman is upset because neighbors are letting off fireworks... It looks like uh, it's in the street, and uh, this woman's just trying to sleep, right? She's got a job to get to. It sounds like she's being hit, right? It kind of sounds like a war zone, and she's been injured, but she's just saying stop over and over. lady you got a problem with freedom that's what the fourth of july is all about you stupid bitch moving on i've got a clip from a a crazy preacher this is one we featured a a couple times before greg Locke. i think he was the one that was having that a big book burning let's call it a festival a book burning festival he was urging people to burn their copies of twilight and harry potter satanic material like that anyway uh greg Locke is back and i think this is a clip of him in a good mood and it's all because of that supreme court decision overturning roe versus wade he feels emboldened to uh, make a very strong declaration uh, about his congregation i'm to the place right now if you vote democrat i don't even want you around this church you can get out yeah demons get out you demon yeah you can get out you baby butchering Election thief! Yeah, you, you, you fetus, vacuum-sucking, demon spawn shit! You cannot be a Christian and vote Democrat in this nation! I don't care how mad that makes you! You get pissed off as you want to! You cannot be a Christian and vote Democrat in this nation! They are God-denying demons that butcher- Again, I think this is Greg in a good mood. You know, he's happy about the Roe versus Wade thing. Babies and hate this nation! They hate this nation. It's true. I'm a big proponent of baby killing, and I hate America. Please don't isolate that audio. I don't need anyone coming after me. It's not true, by the way. I love America, and one of the reasons why I love America so much is because we can kill babies here. Not only that, but we've perfected the art of baby killing. There are so many different ways to go about it. Women can take a pill and pussy fart out the baby. You can... uh, shove a hose up the vag and suck that little thing out. I think there's some chemical ways to do it where you like you, you, you burn the fetus. And then of course, uh, late term abortions, they like they rip the, the limbs and stuff out of the baby. I don't know. I saw it in some Christian video. I think they like take a, a little tiny chainsaw up the cunt and then, woo, woo, like they saw off baby parts. Maybe it's just a dream I had. Me and Martin Luther King are very similar. We've, we we had some um, amazing dreams. Get mad all you want to. I don't care if you stand. I don't care if you throw tomatoes, praise God. I'm about to throw a microphone up in his house. Oh. CNN can eat my dirty socks. You cannot be a Democrat and a Christian. You cannot. Somebody yeah. say amen. Rest- Always got to bring CNN into this. So you get- what the fuck does CNN have to do with abortion? Get out. Get out. Get out in the name of Jesus. I ain't playing your oh stupid God. games. He is, he's jumping and hopping. Get out. Get out. If my dad saw him, uh, my dad would call him a fairy. God, somebody say amen. I know that because my dad called me a fairy when I would hop around like that. The rest of you, get out. Damn. Get out. Demons. Get out in the name of Jesus. <laughs> I ain't playing your stupid games. Bunch of devils. I'm sick of it. Hey, it's boy. like, you know, you're winning. I, well, why are you so angry? You're getting what you want. A, a, a federal ban on abortions. 
I mean, I guess it's not quite a ban. It, they leave it up to the states or whatever. But still, you guys have been screaming for decades about how evil Roe versus Wade is. Okay, now it's being overturned. And you're, you're still screaming and carrying on. Mm. And, mm. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You ain't seen an insurrection yet. You keep on pushing our buttons, you low-down, sorry, compromisers. You God-hating communist America, you'll find out what an insurrection is because we ain't playing your garbage. We ain't playing your mess. My Bible says that the church of the living God is an institution that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And the Bible says oh, that right. we'll uh, take it by oh. force. That's what the Bible says. If I carried on like Greg here, I would drop dead of a heart attack. There's no way I, I could sustain that level of angry energy. Maybe there is a God protecting him. I don't know how more pastors don't just die mid-sermon because their heart is going at like 700 beats a minute or something. Well, there you go. That's uh, MAGA preacher Greg Locke on the baby butchering election thieves. Final clip I have for you is an angry mom who is visiting the dentist on behalf of her child. Apparently her kid was at the dentist and um, uh, left with a mark on his skin, on his cheek. And it, it looks like, a, to me, it looks like a little rug burn or a rash with a, a tiny little scab, starting to scab over already. Well, anyway, uh, the mom's upset with the dentist and uh, she, she wants to know what he's going to do about it. What's going on? Um, he has a, I'm, I'm sure they already told you, but he has a. Okay, that'll, it's just a, yeah, but the, the mouth part probably caught his cheek a little bit there right the mouth guard caught his cheek a little okay it's it's there's an indentation on his cheek and it's scarring oh i don't know what you i don't no, i don't know what you want me to do about it okay it's gonna, it'll, well, it should heal perfectly with no scar now he seems annoyed and he doesn't have good customer service skills but yeah the mom's overreacting here have you had this happen before? oh all the time okay so you can guarantee me that it's not going to leave hyperpigmentation are you a skincare expert okay Take care. I, I, it was an accident. We apologize. I don't you, know have, you didn't apologize yesterday. I asked you multiple times. He let out a scream that everybody heard. What do and you, you tried to like shrug it off. What do you want us to do? I want you to make sure that nothing's going to happen. I can't do anything day. about it. You know, when we talk about uh, parents sheltering their kids, this is this is like a good example, right? I want to make sure. I want you to make sure that my child's face is not going to be disfigured. He's like, first of all, he's a dentist, so he, he can't make sure of that. Second of all, it's a tiny mark on his face let's give it a week or two before we go to like uh, disfigurement and permanent scarring I mean, a cat jumping on him right with, with its claws would leave a bigger mark i i i, I okay. can only i can and only hold sorry and... i scarred your face uh what do you want me to do about it scarred i, I, didn't I wasn't even in the... yesterday i tried to multiple times ask you what's wrong i don't know well, i don't think that's going to scar the, the taste of blue i don't think that's going to scar okay if it does i don't know how, okay, i don't know what else to tell you report, oh, don't... Can you you can write one up no you, you can to. write one up that this happened to him please oh okay thank I... you yeah i don't know what you want us to do i about. want an incident report please Okay. <laughs> You're searching for something. I'm not searching for anything. Sure you are. You scarred my sure. child. I didn't do anything. I didn't even touch your this, kid. This place scarred my child, and I need to. I need to make sure that he's, he's not going to. I don't think he's going to be scarred. You're not a skincare expert, so you don't well, know. So Neither are you, lady. I can you do a skincare him. expert then. I'm taking him here first. I will take him to a skincare okay. expert, but I'm taking him here okay. first. I need you to take responsibility. I need some kind of incident report. We'll, we'll write up whatever you need to Thank write you. up. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. You, I'm sorry. You're looking. You're searching. You're trying to get searching. us. You're trying not, to get us. I'm not trying sure to get you. Are. you. Yeah, you are. I'm not trying to. Yeah, you are. Okay. You're trying to get us. Okay. Assume whatever you want. Assume whatever you want. You scarred my child. He's a minor. He let out a scream <laughs> yesterday. You traumatized him, and now you're acting I, like. I, oh, I sorry, gonna... Yeah, that's the other thing that got me. As a society, we are just we're throwing around that word trauma pretty willy nilly. He is traumatized. He has gone through a trauma. He has a he has a tiny mark on his face. Yeah, it may have hurt. Rug burns hurt. Being scratched hurt. Falling on you know and skinning your knee hurts. Is it traumatic though? You this clinic. I'm not. A, you're you're coming in here because you're taking responsibility. Or you're coming in here. So if you're if what, I don't if think it wasn't you, then why are you here talking to me if it wasn't you? Who are you? Okay. You have a good day. You okay? too. We're not trying to hurt you your too. kid. We see thousands of... We're not trying to, but you did. No, we didn't hurt. He's hurt. He's hurt. His skin is hurt. 
his skin is going to heal. He won't even see anything from it. How do you know? I, I can't promise you, but come okay. back in two weeks. Let's look at it. Yes, okay, you exactly. Do, you come that? back in I'm two weeks. I'm not going to argue with you. I don't know who you are. I'm not going to argue with you. That's the whole point. She's filming this whole thing to argue. You have to introduce yourself. I have no idea who oh you my are. God. I'm telling you what happened. You're like, I didn't do anything. So if you no, didn't no, do anything, no, I don't, I don't mean it like that. Are. I just mean I, that's, okay, I, that then, to me is just I don't know nothing. Who you are. I'm talking to her because it happened with her, and I'm asking okay. you or her to write an incident. I don't know what you want to say. So I don't know who. You write up this, that, that. You, you put it in the chart. And yeah, you, you, we, 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 okay. It's already in the chart. It's a long note in the chart. Okay. Well, hopefully your child's going to be able to recover. Fast forward 30 years. He's on public assistance. He can't work. He can't fight. He had to drop out of school. He can't, he can't concentrate because a mouth guard gave him a, a, a scratch at the dentist one time when he was five. You know, I was looking at the comments and it's pretty divided. Like, like a, a lot of these people are team mom. And maybe I'm just like totally out of touch. What do you guys think? Is the mom just trying to protect her kid or is she a world class cunt? Call into the voicemail line. All right, uh, and with that, let's get into the crazy, bizarre twist to the fucked up news right now. You know, I was just thinking, I was just thinking maybe it's a generational thing. I know if, um, you know, my parents took me to the dentist and I ended up with a scratch, my dad would initially just blame me. He'd be like, well, what were you doing? Were you squirming in the chair? You're probably jerking around. And then he would apologize to the dentist for my behavior. I'm surprised. You know, next time, go ahead and just gouge his eye out if he's squirming around too much. All right. <laughs> Love my dad. Uh, if you are not yet Sideshow members, it's a great time to sign up and support the show. Uh, the Sideshow is our member site where you gain full access to the entire archive of programs. More importantly, every week we do brand new exclusive shows, typically on Tuesday and Thursday. Yesterday was a Sideshow exclusive podcast, and I'll be doing another one tomorrow. Memberships are very inexpensive, only $6.99 a month, even less when you opt for a quarterly, semi-annual, yearly, or lifetime membership. Uh, even better news, if you are Spotify users or uh, if you listen to DV through Apple Podcasts, you can now sign up up for sideshow access get those uh, brand new exclusive shows right in the apps with just a few taps uh in in the case of apple podcast you can even pay with uh apple pay which is very cool very simple very fast many ways to access sideshow content now there are no excuses to uh, not sign up superfreaksideshow.com and distortedview.com for more information and finally don't forget we've got a patreon account patreon.com slash distortedview just another way to support the stupidity you can pledge as little as a dollar over there if you pledge at least five you get access to a special voicemail line where i will play your calls first and i believe we have some patrons calling in a little bit later today all right three very quick stories now for step we're starting the day off right with a story from our most fucked up state. Say it with me. Florida, our most fucked up state. Yes. This time uh, we got a story involving a Florida woman. Florida woman is facing felony charges for allegedly beating her husband with a belt. Again, reminds me of my father. After she, quote, caught him watching porn on his cell phone and masturbating. Lady, it's... It's just what guys do. Would you beat a bird with a belt just because it chirped? Would you beat a dog with a belt because it licked its asshole and then your face? I'm running out of examples here, but my point is it's nature. Come on. Angela Davis, 30, was arrested Tuesday morning following a confrontation with the 51-year-old victim at their home in Summerfield, a central Florida community. Uh, how old is this woman? 30? Quite a little spread age-wise there, but okay. Davis's husband told cops that he had gotten into an altercation with her after she interrupted his jack-off session. The victim said Davis became angry and asked to see his phone. I'd be like, bitch, do you want to have sex then? Because if you don't, leave me alone. Let me, let me get off. I mean, he should always offer her first dibs on that dick. I would be like, honey, this is more of a compliment. Like, I was thinking of you. I knew you didn't want to have sex. I didn't want to bother you. So I just, you know, I, I wanted to take care of business myself. Look, if you want to ride my cock, that's fine. Let's go. Leave that shit up to her. Because you know she's going to be like, nah, I'm not in the mood. Well, I, 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 got, I got a bad case of blue balls. I got to do something. I'm not going to be able to, th to think straight today. 
if, if I can't uh, clean out the pipes a bit. Now, I don't think it was the masturbation that was the, the real problem because he could have smoothed that over. He, he could have been like, look, uh, yes, I'm masturbating, but to thoughts of you, I want to be fucking you. You, my lady, you're always in my thoughts. The issue was when uh, she grabbed this guy's phone and discovered some sort of communication between the victim and uh, someone on the website Reddit, which is a weird hookup site, if you think about it. Tinder, Bumble, Match, Plenty of Fish, and Reddit? One of those things does not belong. My question is, what subreddit was he on? I kind of feel a little comforted that the subreddit r slash gore has been banned. Because it could have been something like that. Could have been real problematic. All right. Uh, After Davis discovered some sort of communication between the victim and someone on the website Reddit, uh, police reported a verbal altercation ensued. The dispute subsequently turned violent. Cops charge after Davis wrapped a leather belt with a large metal buckle around her fist. The victim told cops that when he took out his phone to dial 911, Davis knocked the device from his hands and struck him several times with the belt. A patrolman, oh, and also uh, she uh, beat his arms and back. A patrolman reported observing several red marks across the back of the victim, as well as a large raised red lump. Now that might leave some scarring. Someone should tell the mother of that little kid who went to the dentist. This uh, could really result in trauma. When questioned by police, Davis confirmed she had found the victim watching porn on his cell phone and masturbating and that she had gotten upset. Davis claims to have struck her spouse with the belt to protect herself. Okay, I don't think he was in any position to do her any harm. He's got his pants around his ankle, cock in his hand. You know, she's safe. Um, during a short struggle with the... Oh, she had a struggle with the victim. Well, I, you know, I still think she was probably the one that uh, initiated <laughs> any f- sort of physical altercation. Uh, Davis was arrested after investigators determined she was the incident's primary aggressor. See, told you. Uh, Davis was charged with aggravated battery and witness tampering, both felonies. She was freed from the Marion County Jail after posting $1,000 bond and is scheduled for arraignment on June 14th. So there you you go that's what's happening in the great fucked up state of florida second story we have for you an 89 year old midget trapeze artist Keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth i guess we're always just gonna go with that clip now you know what angry cuck will smith means it's time for the start of you access entertainment hollywood news insider report extra edition tonight celebrity lorenzo thomas entertainment Rio. Hollywood. Who is Ralph Macchio banging? Extra. We may need to update some of those celebrity names. Rhea Perlman, Lorenzo Lamas. Not exactly A-list celebrities. All right. Neil Patrick Harris, though, is... What, like a B-plus, B-minus celebrity? I don't know. Anyways, he's in the news. He was a bad boy. Neil Patrick Harris has apologized after a photo resurfaced from his 2011 Halloween party showing a meat platter designed to look like Amy Winehouse's corpse. (laughs) Okay. Well, it was for Halloween, right? Things are supposed to be a little macabre. Uh, A photo recently resurfaced from a Halloween theme party. My husband. Yeah, throw your husband under the bus there. David uh, Burke. (laughs) and I hosted 11 years ago, Harris said in a statement. It was regrettable then, and it remains regrettable now. You should have just said it was a different time. Back in 2011, blackface was okay. Depicting corpses in meat platter form was acceptable. 2011 was great. Uh, He added, Amy Winehouse was a -a once-in-a-generation talent, and I'm sorry for any hurt this image caused. In a since-deleted tweet, party attendee Justin Makita posted a photo of the graphic edible display. You know what? Let me get this up here, because I, you know, I want to see this. How bad? Oh, my God. It is very, it's gross. Who would want to eat off of this? Like, I get it's a meat platter, and it's Halloween, but still, the corpse of Amy Winehouse. There's even, like, a cigarette coming out of her meat mouth. Isn't that a euphemism for pussy? 
Yeah, I'm going to fuck your meat mouth. All right, anyway, so uh, the graphic edible display depicted a bloody version of the late singer lying on an autopsy table with a cigarette in her mouth alongside a small card titling the piece The Corpse of Amy Winehouse. Like it's art or something. Nearly 11 years later, screenshots of the insensitive photo made the rounds on the internet once again, leaving several people with a bad taste in their mouth for the How I Met Your Mother alum, age 48, and some calling the joke uh, fucking disgusting. That's what makes it so great. It's a great Halloween joke. I don't care if it was 10 years ago. Neil Patrick Harris getting an Amy Winehouse corpse meat platter <laughs> three months after her tragic death. Yeah, that's a little soon. Uh, is disturbing. That's someone's daughter, friend, loved one, and is undeniable, uh, undeniably her, one person tweeted. The way Amy Winehouse was treated before and after her death is so insanely disgusting. She deserves so much better. Also, fuck you, Neil Patrick Harris, said another. Yeah, a lot of people uh, coming uh, out with some Neil Patrick Harris hate, although others have defended him, arguing it was just a joke. People should move on, lighten up. Uh, So Neil Patrick Harris apologized for an 11 year old Amy Winehouse joke. Yeah, I mean, seriously, there's got to be a statute of limitations on this on this thing. Like he apologized before it's you know, it's impossible to scrub the Internet completely. So these things will resurface time and time again. I mean, does Neil have to uh, is that his name? Yeah. Neil Patrick. Neil does Neil Patrick. What do you call him? People always just call him Neil Patrick Harris. I've never once heard him referred to just by like his first name. Like, hey, Neil. It's always like it's always Neil Patrick Harris. Do you call him Neil or Neil Patrick? I don't know. Whatever. What was I saying? <laughs> I, I totally got uh, sidetracked by his his name. Whatever. Uh, this isn't Harris's first controversy that led to an apology. The actor said sorry to Rachel Bloom in 2018 after tweeting about not knowing who she was at the Tony Awards. Oh fuck it! Come on, just. How is everyone expected to know? Ever? I don't even know who Rachel Bloom. I can't tell you one fucking thing Rachel Bloom has been in. Should I say sorry to her as well? We all have to know and bow down to the great Rachel Bloom. Fuck her. I mean, I, yes, I realize celebrities are um, uh, by and large dirtbags, but they're only human. I, do you expect them to know every single person in Hollywood? It's like, like you know, when a white person is not comfortable around black people, you're talking to a black person like, oh, um, yeah, my uh, my husband works with a black person. His name is Tom Morris. Do you know him? Do you, you know, because all black people know each other. Although the celebrity thing, I mean, is is tinged in way more narcissism. Like Rachel Bloom is upset because uh, someone doesn't know her. Another celebrity doesn't know her. Now, oh, fuck you. All right. Uh, yes, this is in Harris's first controversy. He had to apologize to Rachel Bloom after tweeting about not knowing who she was at uh, the Tony Awards. So there you go. But Neil Patrick Harris just cannot catch a break. He's in lots of trouble. All right. Final story we have for you to jump. Oh, this is a good one. I'm, you know, anytime someone's on a fucking boat, they do the same joke where they like lean over the edge and they're like, I'm king of the world. All right. It's lame. It was lame 20 years ago. It's actually even more lame today. Well, a man has paid the price for his lameness. A man has drowned. (laughs) A man has drowned, glub, 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 while recreating the king of the world pose from the Titanic movie with his girlfriend on a Turkish pier after the couple. They weren't even on a boat. They were on the pier uh, after the couple slipped and plunged into the sea. Furkan Sifsi and his girlfriend Mine Dinar, or something, both 23, stood at the edge of the Izmit Marina Pier in the northwestern Turkish province of Coachelli. I don't think that's right. It's the Turkish version of Coachella, I think. Uh, it takes place in the middle of the sea. All right, uh, Co- Co- Koseli or something? I don't know. Does that sound better? Let's go with Koseli. Uh, To recreate Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet's famous flying pose in the 1997 film. But (laughs) tragedy struck. Uh, The couple, who had been drinking alcohol before coming up with the brilliant idea, brilliant and new idea of recreating the King of the World pose from the Oscar-winning film, they fell into the ocean at around 9.15 p.m. on Sunday. Local fishermen saw the couple fall off the pier, and they rushed to help them. Miss Dinar managed to grab onto the end of one of the fishermen's fishing rod and was eventually pulled to safety. Hey, just like in the movie, she lives, and, uh, you know, the Leonardo DiCaprio character dies. Drowns. You're not the king of the world. 
The woman's boyfriend disappeared under the waves and the emergency services were called to the scene. Ms. Dinar was taken to the hospital by ambulance while a search operation to find the man was launched involving firefighters and a diving team. His lifeless body was pulled out of the water nearly two hours later. The couple are said to have crossed the security chain, so they shouldn't even been there, to pose on the edge of the pier before be- uh, both fell into the water. After recovering from her ordeal at the state hospital, Ms. Dinar told police that they had been drinking alcohol while fishing and thought it would be funny to recreate the Titanic pose. I agree, it's hilarious. That's why it's being featured right here on Distorted View Daily. She said uh, they crossed the chain to stand on the edge of the pier. They lost their balance, with both of them ending up in the water. The man's body will undergo an autopsy before his funeral takes place in his hometown. The investigation into the incident continues. And on that happy note, that, my friends, is your, I always like to end on death and destruction. That, my friends, is your distorted news for Wednesday. Let's do a couple voicemails and get the hell out of here. All right, my freaky dickies, love to hear from you. And there are many ways to contact the show. Show at distortedview.com. I'm all over social media at Distorted View on Twitter and Instagram. Facebook.com slash Distorted View Show. Don't forget about our brand new YouTube channel. My silly little uh, Pan Am flight training video is the first of our videos to uh, cross the thousand view mark. Yes, we're at like 1.4 thousand. <laughs> what a way of saying that. One point, like, like it's a huge number. 1.4 million. No, no, no. 1.4 thousand. <laughs> but still, look, we're uh, I, like I, I mentioned this yesterday. I love the fact that uh, I'm starting over. I love the like the clawing, trying to get new subscribers and uh, posting all sorts of uh, weird new types of videos and stuff. It's a fun time over there. So I'm having a, a blast with the new YouTube channel. I don't mind <laughs> that our videos uh, are getting a thousand views. I'm actually ecstatic about that. So we will continue to grow. Uh, anyway, uh, check out the newest video and subscribe to the YouTube channel. All right, let's check in with some patrons here. Timothy Hansen. This is Mead Skelton. No. <laughs> Mead calling in. Hi. Yes, on, uh, I, I, you know, I was trying to refrain from talking about the man, but on yesterday's episode, uh, some uh, new information came out, specifically people saying, oh my God, Tim, he's posting more stuff on that fucking message board, specifically about cock sizes. So if you want to hear about Mead's penis and penis theory, uh, check out yesterday's Sideshow exclusive episode. I, I, I can't help myself. Every, he gives me so much content. What am I supposed to do? To explain myself why I was saying I was that the straight boy George. Well, you see... Oh, right. Uh, the other day on the podcast here, I lost my shit. Re- like, I totally was cracking up. Uh, I, I, and I could not compose myself because I was reading a comment from Mead where he compared himself <laughs> to Boy George. He called himself the straight boy George. And speaking of our YouTube channel, I posted a video clip of me. I, I just happened to be recording at the time. Uh, so you can see me. I mean, my whole face turns red. I, I'm, I've am i lost oxygen to my face because I'm not breathing. I'm laughing so hard. Oh, you have to excuse my voice. It's a little weird. I have a terrible case of the vapors. Did you, you see I'm like Boy George? You sound like Herbert the Pervert from Family Guy. And the fact that I, too, have yeah. handcuffed yeah, someone to a wall picture and beat them with a metal chain. You want to go they horseback to be a girl and not a boy. <laughs> so that's what me and Mr. George is similarities start and end. Uh, now this patron call is provided by y'all sweet tea. Oh no, <laughs> I just received another cease and desist. Wow, they work fast. This will definitely be needed. I think his house is bugged by y'all sweet tea. Anyway, you should check out the anime Hunter Hunter and Haiku. Uh, I do. They're both very good. I hope you oh. enjoy them, Tim. Well, I will, uh, I will uh, give Lord Douche those anime recommendations. Oh, hey, me. Tim. It's oh. Uh, the devil here. Uh, just thought Again? I'd call to say uh, missed you with that car thing there. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> Anywho. Uh, yeah, Lord Douche pointed out that if um, that car that was coming across, if he didn't fall off... The, uh, the the wall at that moment, he would have just smashed right into our house, actually, which wouldn't have been good because uh, our, our house is falling apart. It's weak. 
Hey, boo. It's uh, Sideshow Freak and Patreon fuckboy Al Jolson calling. <laughs> I was just listening to your Friday show with um, Jilly Bean, that lady knockoff of Little Marky. Yes. And the voice sounded so familiar to me, I couldn't quite place it until the very end. I realized she sounds almost exactly like that fucking cucumber Larry from VeggieTales. He's weird Christian cartoons my oh, mom made me watch when I was a kid. I I don't know why that voice is still lodged in the back of my head, uh, but it was, and I want to know if any of the other freaks have been subjected to that weird fucking Christian nonsense when they were kids. I, I have heard of Veggie Tales. I don't think... Um... I don't think anyone I know, like my nephew, I don't think anyone was into Veggie Tales at the time. I think this is the cucumber you're talking about. And now it's time for Silly Songs with Larry. The part of the show where Larry comes out and sings a silly song. Our curtain opens as Larry. Oh, my hairbrush. Oh, where is my hairbrush? Oh, where, oh, yeah, where, I can where, sort where, of where, see. Where, 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 I, I can sort of hear it. I wonder if it's clear, like, when he's not singing. I, I'm having a hard time finding a Larry clip where he's not singing. I said, what message does my lord have for his servant? You know, that sounds less like Jilly Bean to me. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I'm with you on that one. <laughs> hey, Tim. Haley's Comet calling up. You may be right about that curse. Cause oh, the curse where everyone who draws or designs something for distorted view drops dead? Yeah, I'm not a big fan of that curse. Yesterday... When I got home from work, I tooled around a bit with generating some NFTs, thinking, oh, it'd be fun to sell some DV-themed NFTs as a joke. Mm -hmm. 3 a.m., I'm woken up with major diarrhea. 5 a.m., I'm throwing up like mad. Just thinking about making art for the show made me viciously ill, Tim. Yeah, we got to break that curse because uh, we need some new artwork. I need a new artist. Is anyone brave enough? You might want to talk to an exorcist or something. I think Mead may have put a hex on Of course. Mead is behind this all. I should have known. All right. Well, if anyone can get in contact with an exorcist or, I don't know, a shaman or something that could help us uh, lift this curse, that would be great. All right. Uh, that is all the time we have on this edition of the show. I want you guys to email me. Show at distortedview.com. Distortedview.com is our official website. Voicemail line for you, 206-666-4463. That's 206-660. Oh, God, is it? Oh, God. You get out, you demon. Spread the distortion. STD. Tell all your friends about the program. Don't forget to give us a five-star rating, a thumbs up, or like wherever you can rate and review podcasts. Tomorrow's episode is going to be Sideshow exclusive. If you want to hear it, you got to sign up. Superfreaksideshow.com. Otherwise, I'll see you back one more time as we end the week with the Friday show. Until then, have a great day. Bye, everybody. Bless America, my home, sweet home. This has been another excellent podcast from the Scrod Media Group. Learn more at scrod.net.